Hello, students, and welcome to Module 2. As I mentioned uh, last week, we may not be able to have a uh, scheduled, structured class as we did last week because I'm going to be at the CAVE conference, the California Association for Bilingual Education conference. And um, we might be able to do a live transmission from there. I'll show you that in just a moment. But if not, I'm going to give you the instructions for the week or the module so that you know what you need to do for the assignments. So let's get to it now. This is the module, what you need to do and be able to do. The introduction, the class lectures, the recordings are going to be here. I'll show you that in just a moment. I have another set of flashcards here for you to review. Again, uh, do these a few at a time just as you study flashcards for other subjects that you may have class exercise one here you're going to do your first uh, written translation in this class these are instructions on how to do class exercise one and homework one homework one is an audio recording consecutive interpretation you have a group discussion on identifying ethnicity here is the syllabus quiz and a summary of module two let me show you the PowerPoint, which is the same information that we're going to be covering. This is just what we covered on the module, the sequence. We'll take a quick look at a blooper. There's a couple more that I added in the Canvas module. We'll look at the federal and state laws for limited English proficient people, students, parents, etc. We talked about the educational glossaries last week. I'll talk to you about the class exercise. A DACA translation, review of the homework, recording, and any questions that you may have, you can send them to me. We'll look at the blooper when we get to the module. So the law says that we have to provide interpretation for limited English proficient people. This is a civil rights law from the United States Department of Justice. Here is the actual uh, law. There's a PDF right there. And it also for, from the California Assessment and Language Services Policy and Process. So both federal and state laws require that we provide language access to parents. You can go to these websites and they are in the module as well. But in essence, the school must provide information to the parents in a language that the parents can understand. And that's the text. That's what the law says in a language I can understand. So you can read through this, but in essence, yes, the schools are required to provide language access to parents, just as people who are proficient in English would understand. So at that level, and this includes any and all information related to any school programs, school activities, how to enroll in school, any complaint procedures, uh, any programs, parent handbooks, the report cards, any gifted and talented programs, student discipline policies and procedures, any information that any English speaking parent would understand needs to be provided in that same level to the Spanish speaking parents or any other language other than English. Continuing here from the Department of Justice Civil Rights Division, the school cannot ask a child or other students or untrained school staff to interpret for parents. The schools must provide a translation or interpretation service from appropriate and competent individuals and may not rely on or ask students, siblings, friends, or untrained school staff to translate or interpret for parents. And here is the same law in the state of California. And if there are any complaints about that, the California Department of Education is the party responsible to ensure that all limited English proficient individuals are provided equal access. And that is the crux of the matter. We need to provide equal access to parents to anybody that is related to the school that has limited English. And this is from the Daimali Alatorre Bilingual Services Act and Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. So this is embedded in the laws. And this is more explanation on the California side of the law. And if there are any complaints, they need to be filed directly with the school district first. And there's an appeal process and a complaint process that is followed. So when you are working with educational interpretation or translation, you want to research what you're going to be interpreting for. Are you going to be talking about Kinder 12, K-12 terminology? Are you interpreting a presentation on financial aid? Is there a special education 
meeting that you're going to be interpreting. So prepare for that. So you research the area where you're going to be translating or interpreting. If the school district or the educational institution has an official glossary, it would behoove you to get a hold of that information and use what they're already doing. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Some districts do have their own official glossary and you are more than welcome to use that. You want to research online for Spanish translations of the educational terminology in question. Again, so you do not have to reinvent the wheel. And I showed you last week in module one where the glossaries are, which is above module one. Now, when you write in Spanish, you're going to be translating. So you are writing in Spanish. You need to follow the Spanish grammar rules. And something that is markedly different than English is the placement of the quotation marks, las comillas. Para una cita textual, el punto o coma va afuera de las comillas. Por ejemplo, comillas. ¿Por qué me dijiste que no quieres ayudar en el proyecto de la oficina? Cierra interrogación. Cierra comillas, coma. Preguntó sorprendida la supervisora a la empleada estrella de la empresa. In English, you would have the closed question mark, the comma, and then the quotation mark. En español, las comillas van dentro de la coma o punto. Como vemos aquí abajo. Otro ejemplo, ya quiero que se termine la clase BA131. Cierra exclamación, cierra comillas, coma. Exclamó el estudiante. En el punto es igual. Abres comillas. Según las cifras más recientes del censo de Estados Unidos, la población latina supera los 58 millones. Comillas. Punto. In English, you would have 58 million period quotation marks. So it's very important to make this distinction. If you use Google Translate or any other machine translation, more than likely you are going to get the English grammar. And if that's the case and you do not correct it, you're going to have automatic points deducted when you place the period, the comma, or the quotation mark inside the quotation marks against the grammar rules for quotations. Here is a website where you can follow the accent of syllables. And I'll show you this in here. Hablamos de la tilde diacrítica en monosílabos. El, sin la tilde, es el artículo masculino. El, el, con la tilde, es el pronombre personal. El conductor paró el automóvil. El artículo masculino, el conductor, el automóvil. El, con acento, es el pronombre personal. Me lo dijo él. Okay. This is the, the, this is he or him. He told me. Tu posesivo, sin la tilde. Tu con tilde es un pronombre personal. ¿Dónde has puesto tu abrigo? Your versus you. Tú siempre dices la verdad. Revisa todas estas palabras que tienen tilde diacrítica. Por ejemplo, mi posesivo, te invito a mi casa. Mi, nota musical. Intentemos un mi natural en todos los instrumentos. Mi pronombre personal. ¿Tienes algo para mí? Cuando tiene tilde, esto significa el pronombre personal. Do you have something for me versus my? I invite you to my house. Lo mismo con te y te, pronombre personal, te sustantivo. Te he comprado un coche. Toma una taza de té. Nota las diferencias. Go through these, and I'm going to show you a website where you can practice these, but it's important for you to understand the usage where you don't have a tilde. These two, si conjunción, si llueve, no saldremos, right? This is if, if it rains. This is la nota musical si. Vamos a dar un si bemol, no tiene tilde. Si, cuando es yes, si acabé el trabajo. O si el pronombre personal, himself, solo habla de sí mismo. Himself does have a tilde. Yes, does have a tilde, but if and si, the musical note, does not have a tilde. Lo mismo con más y más, de y de, de proposición del verbo dar, pronombre personal, se, se comió toda la fruta, 
Sé del verbo ser o del verbo saber. Sé benévolo con ellos. Be, right, to be. Yo no sé nada. I do not know. So these do have a tilde. This usage does not. Y la letra O, conjunción disyuntiva, que significa uno o lo otro. Vamos al teatro o a caminar. No tilde. O, solo se acepta la tilde en la conjunción disyuntiva. O, que significa uno o lo otro, cuando se escribe entre cifras para que no se confunda con el ser. Tres o cuatro. Evita que tres o cuatro se confunda con trescientos cuatro. And we'll talk about the exercises in the module. The instructions are there as well, so I'm going to show you those in the Canvas. This is homework one. Again, I'll give you those instructions in the Canvas. And if you have any questions, you can send me an inbox in Canvas, or you can email me. You have that information. All right, let's go back to the Canvas. So in the introduction, this is what you're going to be doing this week. We talked about these. I'm not going to repeat them. Those are due dates. We'll talk about these with the assignments. And these are the suggested readings that you have here. There's a DACA PDF immigration form that you can check out. Ejercicios para tildes. This is the one I showed you in the PowerPoint, which will open this page here. In here, you can practice la tilde diacrítica, tú, tú, con el personal o posesivo, el, el. So when you click here, I'm just going to open it in a new tab, you get to practice. Aquí ves el uso. Ejercicios de acentuación diacrítica, tu posesivo y el ejemplo. Esa es tu casa, right? This is your house. Tú eres Antonio. Tú el pronombre. You are Antonio, right? So in here, you get exercises and you have to choose. Tú no tienes mucha paciencia. ¿Cuál va a ser? Posesivo o pronombre. Aquí escoges. Tú no tienes mucha paciencia o... Tú, con tilde, no tienes mucha paciencia. Ok. You do the next one. Esa es tu almohada nueva. I'm going to just do this real quick, but you take your time and understand what you're doing. Tu mano está muy fría. Tu mano, ok, posesivo. Esperaron a que tú llegases. Fuiste tú el que llamó antes. Puedes prestarme tu coche. Okay. Notice that these will reverse, so be careful. It's not the first or second. It's whatever it says. These, the tilde is first and not this one. this one. Lo que tú pienses no me interesa. ¿Cuál va de las dos? Yo soy amigo de tu hermano. Tu pelo es muy bonito. ¿Por qué no hablaste tú? Tú puedes aprobar el examen. Y yo creo que tú también puedes. Me gusta estar a tu lado. Okay, once you do this, right, make sure you check again, and you check, comprobar. Te va a decir que 100%, si te equivocaste, te va a decir en las que te equivocaste. So you can check that, you can go back to the other ones, el versus el, me versus me, and then you can see the usage. So that's this one, ejercicios para tintes. Take a look at this blooper and the ones that follow. Caution, stand clear of door. Okay, that's a good warning. Precaución, estar claro de puerta. Notice what is wrong, and you can comment in the class questions. This one, this is, was a post on Facebook from a little while ago. This is not a translation blooper, but a syntactic blooper. Because notice what it says. You have little puppies here. Doy perritos en adopción, ya comen gente responsable. What? Are they eating responsible people? No, you should have. Doy perritos en adopción, obviously accent mark, a tilde there. Punto, ya comen, punto, o punto y coma, gente responsable. They want responsible people to take care of them. But because it's written like this, it's misunderstood as I'm adopting out puppies. They are eating responsible people. So be careful. The PowerPoint is here. These are the links that I showed you in the PowerPoint. And we talked about the educational glossaries that are above module one. The class lecture is going to be here. I'll put this recording in the introduction, the one we're doing now. And if we get to connect on Wednesday, I'll put the link right here. This is the Thursday recording. And I'll tell you what we're going to be doing 
if we get to connect on those days live. These are the flashcards. They are different from last week's. So check them out and practice those words. Last exercise one. So this is a two part assignment. You have a written translation that is due March 3rd and an audio recording of your translation March 10th. We'll talk about that next uh, week, but you can start doing this. Translate this article below in a Word document. When you translate in a Word document, change the default settings to Spanish so you can check the Spanish grammar. And if you go here, this is the actual article in the New York Times. You don't have to do that. I copied it for you here. So I would copy this, Control C. When you open your Word document, Control V, you have these, let me make it smaller. You just can look at the whole thing. I copied it into Word. So what I do, and what you want to do is set the spelling to Spanish. Right now it's in English. By default, you're probably going to have yours in English as well. So what I do is I select everything, Control A. Then either at the bottom, English, United States, or review language, proofing language, set proofing language. And then I have Spanish here. And now when you type, it's going to correct for Spanish. Right now it's wrong because these are English words. So as you type, para maestros que trabajan mediante DACA, vamos a dejar DACA así, a better sweet start to the school year. Un comienzo agridulce para el comienzo del año escolar. You might notice what I did there. And we'll talk about that next time we meet. Ask me about that and I'll show you. So now, because this is in Spanish proofing, the Spanish language, if I had a misspelling, it's going to let me know that it, this is misspelled. That's why we want to change your proofing language to Spanish. Comienzo. You can check right there. All right. So this is what you're going to be doing. Translate this. Translate the article. And submit. Again, this is due March 3rd. And this is the rubric for grading. For the homework, how to do class exercise one and homework one. Suggested guidelines here. Make sure you follow the quotation marks grammar rules in Spanish. We talked about this in the PowerPoint. And you're going to follow this as well. Once you have a written translation of the DACA article, you're going to record the audio and upload it in module three, which we're going to open that Monday. And here are some tips on how this was done. So follow these. For homework one, you have an audio recording for of consecutive interpretation. So this is when the person speaks, they pause, and then you interpret into Spanish or into the other language. You're going to interpret for this special education teacher and the psychologist from English to Spanish to the parent and from the parent from Spanish to English for the IEP team. Use any voice app or any voice recorder. Make sure that the recording you submit is understandable, no background noise, except for the speaker that you're shadowing or you're interpreting for. Make sure that your voice is clear. Listen to it before you submit. Last year, I had a student who submitted something that was barely, barely audible, and they had to do it again. So before you submit, make sure that is understood, that is heard. So listen to it. When you submit it, you put it in this format, your last name, your first name, one. If you don't know how to submit a file, a media file on Canvas, here are some instructions. There is a pause in the recording 
this is where you are going to render your interpretation during this silence. Don't change it. Don't pause it. Just go ahead and do your best. If it's taking you too long and the recording starts, the next person starts, don't worry. Just practice, practice, practice. So when you do this, when you interpret, I haven't showed you exactly how to do this, but just you may have done this before. Think of the information, how you would say it in the other language. It helps sometimes if you close your eyes so you can focus better. You can look up any words that you don't know in the dictionaries on your Quizlet flashcards, and you can just jot down any words that you don't know, look them up later. Just don't take too much time writing each and every word. We'll talk about note-taking in an upcoming class. And don't write too messy. You should be able to read your notes back to yourself. Listen to the audio at least three times before you upload your assignment. And choose your best recording. Listen, evaluate yourself. If you have too many ums and ahs, and here is the audio. You're going to listen like this. I'm going to let Mrs. Garcia get started with the reports for Diego's triennial IEP. Every three years, we fully assess his academics to see how much progress he is making. And in this pause is where you would render your interpretation. So don't pause it, let it go, and then you record your own. And then it'll continue. Thank you, Mr. Cox. I'm going to share a copy of the report and all the testing. We will send a copy of all the reporting for Dad as well, so we are going to just summarize everything. And in this pause is where you would give your rendition. See how this is going? It's not pausing. Just let it run. And we then know you his do primary your, language is... And then you do your rendition in this space. Here are some sample videos to help you prepare. You have a little consecutive interpretation here. Can you tell the ladies and gentlemen what happened, please? This is the one we saw in class just to demonstrate consecutive interpretation. There are other videos here just for you to get a sense of it. This is a more professional way of consecutive interpretation, a little bit of note taking, consecutive interpretation without notes. Just take a look at these four samples, but just do your best in this assignment. For this group discussion, read the instructions here, and then you can read this article to answer the prompt here. Make sure you subscribe so you can get notified of the responses. Talked about the syllabus quiz. This is right here. You can take it here. This is due this week. And finally, this is the end of module two. This is what you will have done. And every section from now on, or most every module, you'll have a deeper dive. This is optional for those of you who like to go further in your studies. I have some resources in the summary at the end of the module. If you want to learn more about what we talked about, what we covered. So in this instance, we talked about the uh, tildes, the accent marks. So here is a refresher on the complete guide to Spanish accent marks. You can check this out. You have all the rules, not just the simple rules that most people learn in the beginning. The exceptions to the tilde, the accent marks in Spanish. En este divertido video. Linguriosa, this is a YouTuber, presenta todas las reglas de acentuación y explica la diferencia entre la tilde y el acento. And there's a difference between tilde and acento. So check this out for that. Si quieres un mayor reto, en esta página de la Universidad de Valencia se explican las reglas de acentuación del castellano. Hay unos ejercicios ahí y puedes compararlas con estas reglas de acentuación de Palabras a Medida, another website. Y luego considera cuál de estas dos exposiciones es más fácil de entender para ti y por qué. ¿Cuál de las dos recomendarías para alguien que sabe hablar español pero quiere mejorar su escritura en español y por qué? And that's it. So, I'll let you know in a post whether we will have a class on Wednesday and Thursday at 3.30. On Wednesday and Thursday, what I plan to do is to give you a live view of how this happens, how interpretation happens. On Wednesday is the opening session, and I'll be interpreting with someone so you get to see how it's done. I'll be in the back of the room doing the live interpretation at the meeting, so you get to see that. And of course, the meeting is going to go until about five or six, 
and at the five o'clock mark, you can log off because that's the end of our class. I'll be commenting from time to time because I'll be interpreting, but somebody else will interpret with me. So you get to see how that is done. And on Thursday, I'm looking at the calendar here on Thursday around three, three fifteen or so, I'll be participating in a panel on interpretation. So again, if I get access to the Wi-Fi there so that I can broadcast to the class, you will get to see this panel, live panel on professional interpreters and what interpretation is and, and our history and all that. All right. Looking forward to seeing you in class, whether this week or next one. So stay tuned and we'll see you soon.